Ladies and gentlemen, it is Wednesday the 12th of August and Mojang has released two snapshots today. My name is Slice Lime. I am here to take you through the changes in these snapshots. They released the first weekly snapshot titled 15W33A earlier today and it turned out to be fairly unstable so they also released 15W33B to simply fix some of the crashes and issues in that one. So if you're going to be using this one, make sure that you run 15W33B, not A, because the A version was prone to crash a lot and even to corrupt worlds. This update deals mainly with the Ender Dragon fight and with potions. So let's dig into it and start with the Ender Dragon, because that will naturally lead us into potions and you will see why in a minute. The first change is that the dragon can no longer be shot while it's hovering above the portal. If you shoot the dragon while on the portal, the arrow will simply bounce off. You can, however, still go up and whack it with a sword. There are other changes to the fight as well. The projectiles shot by the dragon now leave a permanent cloud. And that seems like a likely bug to me. I'm pretty sure the cloud is supposed to go away after a time, but currently it seems to be at least very long lived, if not permanent. The cloud deals three hearts of damage through armor and it completely ignores armor. So it's a very dangerous thing. The dragon is also being given a massive increase to its knockback, which means you now often get thrown 30 blocks or more backwards. Now if you defeat the dragon, an end gateway will appear and if you keep defeating the dragon after respawning her, there will be more of them until you have a complete circle of end gateways. They all lead you out to a different section of the sort of outer ring that now exists in the end. The rendering used to be the same as for the end portal. Now the difference is of course that the end portal can only be seen from above or below which means that the rendering was kind of weird on the end gateway blocks. That's now been fixed, so the end gateways look really trippy from all directions. Finally, the dragon's breath effect has been updated. That is an attack that she uses when perched on top of the central portal. This is a one block high effect that lingers on the ground and it gives you three hearts of damage if you're unarmored. But the most interesting thing about it is that you can capture it. You can grab it if you right click it with an empty bottle in your hand and that gives you a dragon's breath item in your inventory. Now, the dragon's breath can be used to create lingering potions. To do that, you add a dragon's breath into a brewing stand that has splash potions in it. It has to be added to splash potions. And then you get a lingering potion of the same type. The lingering potion is different from a splash potion in that it creates a cloud effect on the ground where you throw it. This cloud will apply the effect of the potion to entities in that cloud until the cloud disappears. It disappears over time, but it also disappears quicker when it applies effects to entities. These new clouds are actually a new entity called an Area Effect Cloud, and it seems to be a very versatile entity. It has a particle where you can set which particle it should appear as, so you can have it appear as any of the particles that you can normally spawn with a slash particle command. It also has a reapplication delay, so by default it applies the effect once every second, every 20 ticks, but you can set it to be any number of ticks from 1 to whatever maximum of that type is. Very configurable. It also has a radius and then a radius per tick and a radius on use, which means that by default it shrinks a little bit every tick, but you can make it shrink more every tick, or you can make it increase in size every tick and you can also make it shrink or increase when used. And then of course it has a duration and an amount of decrease in duration that happens every time you use it. As well as of course the effects that it applies to players. So a whole lot of new data tags in this entity that seems like it could make for very interesting custom mechanics for maps. If we stay in the realm of new commands and new features for them, there are two new statistics for every item in the game. That's called stat.drop, dot whatever it is that the item is called, and stat.pickup, dot whatever it is that the item is called. So now if we look in the statistics screen, we can see new statistics for dropping and picking up every single item in the game. There are also two new objective types that are undocumented in the changelog, despite Sarge telling us that there were no hidden features in the snapshot. 
Those objective types are armor and level, and they give you scoreboard input for exactly what it sounds like. The armor level gives you a score representing the same thing that you see down in your armor bar, and the level gives you a single number that is the level of the player. Don't confuse this for the XP stat that we got in the last week's snapshot. This scoreboard objective contains this player's level. Finally, there are a bunch of bug fixes, some to the spawn egg problems. You could get errors when you clicked stuff with spawn eggs and they would spawn invalid mobs that you couldn't target with at E selectors in commands. They've also fixed the problem with slash kill not ending the ender dragon fight, which meant that if you did slash kill on the ender dragon, you wouldn't get a pearl. And they fixed some of the errors that I highlighted in my previous snapshot video such as the save and cancel buttons being inverse in the edit world screen and the portal not working for entities. This means that the portal now transports shulkers properly, which means that the path is now open to start getting shulkers into the overworld and survival. Exciting times indeed! Now, if you want this snapshot, go ahead and open your Minecraft launcher, create a new profile and check the Enable Experimental Development Versions checkbox. That will enable so-called snapshots and then when you save and start the game using that profile, you will download and play this version of Minecraft. Unless there's a newer snapshot at the time when you do that. Do remember that snapshots are experimental, they are likely to contain bugs, even crashes and can potentially corrupt your world. If you do use a snapshot, play it only on test worlds or on worlds where you have a safe backup in store. If you want to read through the official release announcement, there is a link in the video's description for that. And that was all that we know about the snapshot at this time. Enjoy trying out this snapshot for the combat update, Minecraft 1.9. If you found this snapshot video useful, then please do leave a like on the video. And if you want to see more in the future, then feel free to subscribe. My name is Sliceline, thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.